for lesson 5.2, we are going to be discussing perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to read through this and then explain it a, a little more in depth for you so that way it make, I make sure it makes sense. So a segment bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. So if it's called a segment bisector, then you know it's at the midpoint of another segment. Okay? That's the first thing to take from that. A segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint is called the perpendicular bisector. So you see how this has the 90 degree angle sign? Then we know for a fact that this ray is, per is the perpendicular bisector of this segment. Okay? And then we know for sure that it's the midpoint because it tells you that those two segments are equivalent. A point is equidistance from two figures if the point is the same distance from each figure. Points on the perpendicular bisector of a segment are equidistant from the segment's end points. So let's look at these two theorems. Theorem 5.2. Perpendicular perpendicular bisector theorem. In a plane, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So, just to clarify, you see here that CP is the perpendicular bisector, and the point is on that line. See right here, C is on the line of the perpendicular bisector. So that means we know that it is equal distance from each of the endpoints. So in effect, it tells you that these two are also equivalent. Just like this segment is equivalent to this segment, then the C to A is congruent to C to B. Okay? Mathematically, that means they're going to have the same measurements when you guys are solving these for the math, for the measurements. Now the converse of the perpendicular theorem is telling you in a plane, if a point is equidistant from the end point of the segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector. So they just said, okay, if they're telling you that from this point D to B is the same length as point D to A, which we know it all is because it gives you these two tick marks that show they're equal, all that's saying is that they lie on this perpendicular bisector called C, P, line P. Okay? So it's just proving that this point D lies on that line. All right, so let's look at an example. Example one. So here's our figure. In this figure, it tells me that BD, the ray BD, is the perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector of AC segment. Find the measurement of AD. All right, so we know that BD is the perpendicular bisector. So this line right here in the middle is perpendicular. So what does that tell us about any of these measurements? Well, if it bisects this segment directly in the middle, this line equals this line, right? CB would equal BA. Also, CD will equal DA. What theorem is showing you that? The perpendicular bisector theorem, or theorem 5.2, proves that. So if we know those two segments equal each other, then we're just going to set one equal to the other in order to solve for x. So I'm going to say 3x plus 14 equals 5x. Now I just rearrange and solve for x. So since this 5x is larger, I'm going to move the 3x over there. So minus 3x from both sides. Cancel. I get 14 equals 5 minus 3 would be 2x. 
divide by 2 to get x by itself, so then x ends up equaling 7. Okay, what was the question they asked? Find a to d, so a to d would this be this segment. So we found out what x equals, so I can say 5 times x equals 7. So then my ad measurement equals, what's 7 times 5? 35. So that would be your final answer. Good. All right, let's look at example two. All right, by the way, I forgot to, when I started this lesson, if you haven't written down the vocab and the, the theorems, please pause this video and do that first. Also, we're on page uh, 305, but I'm sure you had already figured that out by now. Sorry about that. So in this diagram, this is example two, make sure you're writing these in your journals. We have WX, it's a ray, is the perpendicular bisector of YZ, the segment. So we know that if WX is the perpendicular bisector, we know that this line equals this line, we know that this line equals this line. And then it tells me that we have the 90 degrees. Now you see here that we have a point out here all by its lonesome. It's not actually physically touching the ray WX. But look at these measurements on the left. From V to Y, it's 25. And from V to Z, it's 25. So that tells me that these two measurements are the same. So this one equals this one. And according to theorem 5.3, the converse of the perpendicular bisector, what's it called? Converse of, yeah, of the perpendicular bisector, that this line does in fact extend through that point. It's asking us what segments, so this is A, the question is what segment lengths in the diagram are equal? So you're going to say which ones are equal. There should be several here, correct? We know that because it bisects, we have the first segment here, WY should equal WX, so WY segment uh, equals WZ. I think I said the wrong thing a minute ago. So there's one segment. The next segment is YX and XZ. YX segment should equal XZ segment. And the last one which we just proved was YV segment equals VZ segment. So that's for A. For B, it asks, is V on WX? So WX was this ray going up, and point V was this lonesome out here. Would you say yes or no? You would say yes. And to explain it, you could say yes because of the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem or theorem 5.3. All right, I want to do a guided practice just to get you a little bit more practice. So guided practice down here right below example two. We're on page 306. Focus. nuts tonight. Alright, so here is my diagram. In this diagram it tells me that JK, the ray JK, is the perpendicular bisector of segment NL. 
So let's go ahead and mark this diagram up. JK is perpendicular to NL. So we know that this length equals this length. We know that this length equals this length. And you can see that this last one, they are obviously equal to each other. So we know because of that, 8 and the 8, what do we know about the perpendicular bisecting line, KJ? It does extend through this point M. That's probably going to be one of the questions. We'll see. So number one asks, what segment lengths are equal? So again, you're going to list the three segment sets of segment lengths. So let's just start with the ones in the middle. We have NJ is equal to JL. We have the NK is equal to segment LK. And then the last one we proved by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, 5.3, that NM is congruent to LM. So number two asks, find NK. All right, NK, that's this one right here. Well, we know that NK is equal to KL, so I can set those equal to each other and solve for x. 6x minus 5 equals 4x plus 1. All right, so I'm going to move the 4x to the left because the 6 is bigger. And then I'm going to add the 5 over to this side to get it away. So 6 minus 4 would be 2x. The 5's cancel. The 4x's cancel. 5 plus 1 is a 6. So divide the 2 away from the x, and I get x equals, what's 6 divided by 2? 3. I should have my daughter answer these. Some of these she can answer. All right, so now we know the measurement of x, but it's asking to find nk, right? So nk originally was 6. We can plug in with a 3 wherever the x is, minus 5. So 6 times 3 would be 18. 18 minus 5 would be 13. So the length of NK is 13. Sorry, the proper way to write this is NK equals 13. This would be your final answer. Okay, and then 3, I'm just going to do orally with you, but we've already proven it. Explain why M, this little point here, is on JK. And you can go to a huge long explanation, but bottom line is because those two measurements are the same, theorem 5.3, the converse of the perpendicular bisector, proves that M lies on JK. All right, a couple more theorems to look at. <laughs> Actually, it was a couple definitions in one theorem, but we're going to still go through these real quick. All right, concurrency. This is a definition that you need to have written concurrent. Uh, when three or more lines, rays, or segment intersect at the same point, they are called concurrent. And three or more lines, guys, so not just two. Um, the point of intersection of those lines, so the point in wherever those intersection is the point of concurrency. I know that seems redundant to explain that, but just making sure. Um, and remember that three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are congruent, as are concurrent, and the point of concurrency has a special property. All right, so let's go over this theorem. Theorem 5.4, concurrency of perpendicular bisector of a triangle. This states that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the vertices. Remember, the vertices are your points of a triangle. Okay, so in this case, the perpendicular bisectors are the blue lines. So they went to the middle of each line and drew to the middle. So the perpendicular bisector of AB would be where D is. Draw a line to the middle. The perpendicular bisector 
is between A and C is where F is. Draw, draw a line to the middle. This point in the center is called the point of concurrent C. So that green point. <coughs> Excuse me. That green point in the middle is the point of concurrency, point P. Okay? And then this is also telling you that from that point you can have a line going to each vertice, each vertex, vertice was plural, that was silly. <coughs> and these lines all equal each other. They're all the same length, okay? So this is one of your theorems you just need to understand and memorize, so that way they're gonna obviously give you measurements of parts of these and tell you to find the missing measurements. So, let's do an example. This is example three. All right, so they give you a map here. And this map is talking about distances between some of these points. I'm gonna draw on this map. What color? Blue probably show up. All right, three snack carts sell frozen yogurt from points A, you can see A, B, and C right here. Okay? And they're all outside the city. Each of the three carts is the same distance from the frozen yogurt distributor. So the frozen yogurt distributor. Find the location for the distributor that is equidistant from the three carts. So if you connect these carts, now we'll see a miracle if I can draw straight lines. Whoops, try that one again. Oh, I might make it. All right, so you see that these uh, each of these lines, how would I find the point that is the same distance from each distributor? You're going to find the midpoint of each of these <coughs> lines on the outside of this triangle and then draw the point of concurrency. Okay, so in this case, you're going to want to get a ruler if you don't have one and mark the point on the line that's the midpoint. So between A and B, the midpoint, I should get a bigger dot, halfway through, between B and C, the midpoint, halfway through, and between A and C, the midpoint halfway through. That doesn't look halfway. There we go. So each of these is the midpoint. Now you're going to draw, these are right angles, okay? So when you draw a line, it has to be a line that's a right angle to the line you're drawing. Okay, so this one's going to kind of come out, oops, this way. This is a right angle, if I can draw a stri straight line. And then this is a right angle. And you just kind of draw until you figure out where they meet. Okay, and mine's not gonna be perfect. I don't expect yours to be perfect. Okay, the center is called the what? Point of concurrency. Very good. I hope you all yelled that at the screen for me, thanks. Um, and you know that because uh, of that they're all midpoints, that this segment will equal this segment, this segment should equal this segment, and this last segment should equal this segment. Okay? And then you can see that from this point to this point is equal from the point of concurrency to the last one 
and the point of concurrency to this one. So all three of these lines are equal. Okay, in this case it didn't need you to find any measurements, it actually just wanted you to draw so I could see where the uh, point of concurrency is for where they should build this yogurt distributor. Okay, uh, in your journals you don't have to draw it on the picture as long as you have drawn this triangle and all of that mess with it. So if you have it, pause me now and go copy it. Um, and I would label some stuff so that it helps you remember. So the yellow is what? The point of concurrency. Concurrency. Is that spelled right? I don't think it has a T. Yeah, there's no T. That's weird. I'm a math teacher, not a spelling teacher. Concurrency. Okay. Um, each of these points is called a vertex, to remind you. And the green lines, these are perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular. bisectors. Okay? Alright, make sure that's in your journals. You're getting points for all these. Alright, the last thing we need to go over is what is a circumcenter. So, let me take a picture. So, the circumcenter. The circumcenter is the point of concurrency of the three perpendicular bisectors. Your parents are going to think you're super smart if you start throwing these words out of them, by the way. Uh, of a triangle is called the circumcenter of the triangle. The circumcenter P is equidistance from all three vertices. So, P is the center of a circle that passes through all three vertices. So essentially, you have a triangle that you've already found the circumcenter on. So in this case, you see the circumcenter is here. And if I were to draw a circle that connects the vertices of each of the point of that triangle, then that circumcenter P point is always going to be equidistance from every part of the circle. It doesn't matter which way you draw a line. It's always going to be equal. See how these are all the same measure. Okay, doesn't matter what kind of triangle you draw here. So you can see here I have a nice little right angle triangle. Once we found the point of concurrency and you see this one randomly landed exactly on one of the perpendicular bisectors, it can happen, then this would be the circumcenter. Okay, from here to all parts of the circle are all equal. Okay, in the last triangle, this one's a little unique because it's an obtuse triangle. So the point of circumcenter is actually outside of the triangle. Because in order to draw this circle to make all these points, uh, make the circle hit all the vertices, you have to have a obtuse, it makes a weird circle. Um, it's called circumscribed to put it outside the uh, or in the triangle, outside the triangle. So this point of circumcenter is still equidistance to every single point on the circle. Okay? So uh, you're actually not going to be tested over this right now, so just make sure you've written this in the journal. We'll go, we'll have this a little bit more in some later exercises. Alright, so your assignment This was lesson 5.2. You need to do numbers I had it written down. Oh, uh, 3 through 21 odds only. Okay, so it's actually a pretty short assignment. Um, 
please take a picture of it and submit it online. Um, a tip for you. Uh, if you don't want to have to take a picture, email it to yourself, download it, upload it from your Chromebook, you could go on your phone or iPad or whatever you're using to take the picture and go into your internet browser, log into your Google Classroom on the internet browser and submit it that way, even though it's on your phone or tablet, it'll still work. Pass that along to your friends. Um, please comment, email if you have questions, I'm happy to help. Uh, there's a live tutoring session um, for chatting tomorrow. I'll be available from 10 to 12. Tuesday, it'll be a live video. Nope, Thursday. Today's Tuesday.